Hello everyone, today's question is, is there a correct physical response to any given musical problem? Well, yes and no. Thinking that there's only one solution to uh, any specific musical problem robs the music away from uh, its very nature, namely the fact that it speaks differently to many different people. It's a given that if you take uh, one, two, three, four, ten different recordings uh, from uh, different conductors, you will have one, two, three, four, ten different interpretations of it. To dig a bit deeper into this, we're going to look at one iconic piece, the Overture of Mozart's Zauberflitte. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Giovanni Grillo, my conductor and composer. If you're new here, this channel is all about classical music conducting and conducting technique in particular. If you have any question or any suggestion, please leave them down in the comment section. And now, let's keep going. If we look at the score, the tempo indication is Adagio, which in Italian simply means with ease. Now, the piece is in cut time, but if you listen to a recording from Bruno Walter, for instance, or from Klemperer, or from Böhm, then you will find that this piece was performed by them in a, at a very slow pace. And from a technical point of view, it was clearly subdivided in eight. If you listen to other recordings, like Abado, for instance, you can clearly hear that the feel of it and the conducting of it is in four. And of course, there's a third option, doing it in a very slow two. Now, the difference between doing this in four or in two, even if it's almost at the same speed, would actually be in the musical intention behind it. Are you looking at the cut time, for instance? Are you looking at the bass line, which is uh, clearly in two? Do you want those forzatos at the end of the adagio to have that kind of tension that comes from getting in between a two line? That's all up to you, actually, because that is your interpretation, that is your musical response. Now, based on that, then you need to find your own physical response. Of course, you mix and match, get all the tools, the basics, and everything that you can get from music, from a, a conducting technique, and then you adapt them to your own body, you adapt them to your interpretation, and that's how you can make your own music come out and come live. Let's look at the difference. What would we like to do this in A, to stop dividing every bar? If we start with the pickup to bar number four, then the pickup would, of course, be an eight note. Click, one, two, one, two, one, two, pa. Now, of course, you can um, smoothen this out and making sure that you're not exactly doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which actually chops up the line. But if that's your idea, so you feel it like it needs to be in eight, so this kind of very uh, um, slow, majestic uh, type of uh, feeling sound, then you take technique and make it work for yourself with a legato click. What's a legato click? Well, is a click that does not have a sharp rebound, but is much smoother. At this stage, this is very mechanical, but this is your starting point. If you have it a little more fluid and still maintain the eight, then it's, the subdivision is very light. There's a very, very slight click from the wrist. Now, can you do this in four? Of course. At this point, the pickup is one full quarter note. Ooh. In all of these cases, what we really need to keep in mind also is one other small thing, which is the bass line. Now, the bass line, just like the first three chords in the beginning, has a 16th note on the end of, in this particular bar, the second and the fourth beat. What you need to count in your head is one, 
ta 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 pa pa one one two three four one that's your 16 note and that will prevent it from getting sloppy and getting sometimes turned into uh, not clear 16 notes or worse a triplet something that is not quite um, the rhythm that Mozart wrote different version can you do this in two well of course you can that's what technique is about it allows you to um, express your um, musical view. And so forth. It's the difference is actually not that much. And what's important is how you use the space at your disposal. It's still in piano. The phrase is still the same, the music is still the same, how you carry it, how, however, it's a different musical intention that you can have. Now, I'm not debating here what is the correct musical intention, because that's also a mood discussion. And uh, for every argument that this should be in four, there is a counter argument that it could be that this should be in two or in eight. So this is really a different type of discussion. But what I'm trying to say here is that regardless of what your musical idea is, you can have the tools to bend technique to your own interpretation. In the last case, doing it in two, which is actually really not uh, that easy, the key to it is to keep the speed of the baton even. Look at the bass line, one, two, but if you go over and you do one, two, then the entire effect is gone. Why? Because you're wishing, wishing through the, through the sound and you're not carrying the sound from one point to the next. That's what influences the sound of the orchestra in itself. Bonus thing, how do you move from the adagio to the allegro? We actually talked about this in a previous uh, uh, video with the answering a question that was submitted by uh, one of you. And the key here is exactly the same. Stop on the last beat of the bar. Now, whether you're in one, whether you're in uh, four, in two, in eight, it doesn't matter, but you get to the last bar. Let's say we're in four, one, two, three, four, click. That small break, one, two, three, four, and allows you on the end, which is technically a subdivision, so on the end, it allows you to um, give an upbeat in the new tempo. So here's an example of different tempis for the Allegro. Let's start one, two, three, four, different one one two three four one two three four and so forth well, I hope this video gave you some inspiration and uh, some perspective on how the same piece can be addressed technically in uh, different ways according to your own vision of the piece. For more videos, more information, more technical articles, you can take a look at my website. If you have any questions or any suggestions, just leave them down in the comment section and I will see you in the next episode of Conducting Pills. In the meantime, please be well, enjoy conducting and be kind to yourself. Ciao!